got something else rather than paying for more fuel. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh man, this is it's so crazy out here in DC. First up, this half hour to armed robbery at a restaurant in South Damn, East this Police the same neighborhood. The victim talking only to Fox 5 tonight. Shamari Stone has the details. Good evening. Man. I'm here in D.C. City Smokehouse on the 1300 block of Good Hope Road Southeast. And I tell you, the employee here is really shaken up. D.C. police hope that someone can recognize the suspect you're about to see on this surveillance video. He walked right through that door right there. And that's when he grabbed a gun and pointed it at the employee walking all the way over here. Let's roll some video to show you what happened. The masked suspect grabs the employee near the front door, pointing a gun at his head, walking him to the cash register at the restaurant Wednesday around 7 o'clock in the evening. D.C. police telling us the suspect demands money. The employee taking his time to get it. The suspect becomes frustrated, starts grabbing the cash himself. The employee did not put up a fight, and then the suspect walks out with the cash. Back cool here in the out. restaurant, here only on Fox 5, you're actually going to hear from that employee... What is going through your mind? I can only imagine work. I knew it. They don't own anything in their communities. This is a 90% black community. If that, if not more, 95, right? Right, <laughs> right. Right. Best, best believe that man did that before. Look, how he just casually walked out of there. That ain't his first rodeo. Right. Nah, Facts. Definitely not. definitely not. Hey, yo, why don't black people own things in their own community? I got to ask. I mean, I, I, they're, I, they're not good you at tell it. me, huh? They're not good at it. Like this, there's a lot that goes into this. There's, there's the, sure. all the all the skewed numbers. It's the inventory. You gotta get the fucking all the fucking meat in the packaging and the chips and the sodas every day. You gotta, you know, you gotta do all the books and shit. You gotta keep the fucking shit looking nice. It's a lot goes into this. A lot of logistics. Plus, well, that's that's why we don't own anything, period. But why we don't own it in our neighborhoods is because of shit like this. Yeah, that's that's different. We don't we if we do own shit, it'll be somewhere far away from these people. Right, and on top of that, cool cat when you can see they're busy. Yep, they're busy robbing everybody. Yeah, but even the yeah man, I, I saw a story. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, but I saw a story of a a. a uh, a black female she was opening up a, a shop in her community and some sun teens robbed her and killed her right. it's like she's oh, trying to support her own people just to get whacked out it's a that shame a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah yeah it's true and it's a damn shame it really is it's like wow yeah shout out to glad mudshark he says for your information i'm a glider queen okay she says, please make sure your little girl never wears hair hats. Yes, it's facts, man. Got to make sure. Yeah, no. definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah, she put you on game, Ock. She put you on game. Um, my little girl, she got a nice head of hair, man. She, I don't know where she, she get it from her mother, man, because she ain't get it from me, man. I got this. I got, I got like, um, like my hair doesn't Nigerian grow. Hair. Yeah, my hair doesn't grow long. Like, it, it, it. it it, it doesn't grow fast. Like, I tried to get dreads twice in my life, and I just gave up because it wasn't growing fast enough. Mm. Um, yeah. Yo, I, man, you don't need no dreads, man. I'm trying. I'm dealing with that with my son, trying to get that shit cut off. You don't need yeah. that shit. But well, this was in the 90s and the early 2000s. This was a long time ago. Hey, I can yeah. be asking you, Chief. Um, is, is your wife, is she from, is she, is she FBA or is she from the mother? Oh, my wife is FBA, man. She, she, uh, she's a goddamn Negro, man. A fucking American Negro, man. Yeah, Do she ever watch old. these videos, Art? Oh, well, listen, my wife know me. She knows me, so she don't have to watch the video. She gets the last performance. But, but, but to answer your question, <laughs> hell no. Nah, she ain't, well, she hates it. She, she, she used to despise this shit, man. She despised My wife despised this shit, this shit too. She don't yeah. really know too much about what I'm, you know what I'm saying, getting into. Yo, what, what was she yeah. saying? What was she saying about it to you? She heard, like, I talk. Oh, man. My, my, oh, hell yeah. yeah. What, what was she thinking you were talking on, uh, Tracy? Wait, ask that question again. What, what would your girl say if she heard I saying the shit I says and shows us? 
Well, she would agree. We, I think she would agree with it, but you know, she might not like your delivery. You know, she would probably want you to, uh, you know, kind of coat it, you know, in a velvet glove. You yeah, know, fair. I think that's fair. I, I, I Show some that's... compassion. Yeah, like uh, ain't no compassion she, in the street. You see, a lot of white people they know what it is, man. But shoot, they just not gonna be honest, man. Oh, your wife is a glider. Yes. Oh, salute, bro. Oh, she's a glider. I was thinking it was a. Oh, okay. Respect. She so she woke. She's a woke. You got you a woke glider. Yeah. I mean, if she's a if she's a swirler. Oh no, she's no no. She's not woke. We some okay. Trump loving sons of bitches down here. Okay. You got a lot of feedback. I don't know if you got some chips or something, man. I don't know what's going on, man. But <laughs> that ain't yeah. me. Man, having a lunch break, yo. Yeah, my man eating some chips and shit, man. Um, so shout out to Joe, man. Um, yeah, but let's see what this um this fucking glider gotta say. What is going through your mind? I can only imagine working somewhere, a nice establishment like this, and someone putting a gun at your head. Yeah, it's a little difficult knowing the fact that the owner lives down the street and he made this spot for the community to better it, to give an options for food. And then we got to deal with this. We've been in business for over 10 years, and this is the first time anything like this has happened. Well, I'm really sorry that this happened to you. What was going through your mind when you had a gun pointed at your head? Basically, to make it home. At the end of the day, like anybody else, you want to go to work, you want to go home, you want to feel comfortable in your establishment of work and business. And if someone watching this knows who did this to you, what do you want them to do? I'd like to see them get their due justice. That's all. All right, I want to thank you for talking thank to Fox 5 exclusively. I'm Shamari Stone here, and if you have any information about this, call D.C. Police. Keep in mind, you can also call the detectives. Turn yourself in, sir, man. <laughs> hey, to be fair, that particular, lo I don't know if they got other locations, that particular location ain't been there for no 10 years. They've been there for maybe two since the pandemic. Yeah. And then also, though, there is a Black-owned restaurant, like, on the next block. There's two, actually. I love it. Uh, Kitchen Savages. That's another new, relatively what, new joint. Yeah, are they, what are they you know. Um, they serve like American food. Like it's pretty. It's like high end. It's like a kind of high end ish like American food. Like like Kitchen Savages. Yeah, so you know it's son son owned. The constant sounds of construction and congestion would drive anyone away. But Big for chill. this DC native, he relishes in the noise yeah, that's permeating the and accosting. When you're building something for somebody in the community to benefit who live there, it's a different appreciation. From a D.C. council run like to serving as a neighborhood commissioner, Daryl Gaston has been trying to change his community for years. However, he realized for him, government is not the answer. I said, you know what, after 14 years, I have to give it up, right? I had to give it up not only for my mental sanity, but also because I knew in order to be a part of the solution, I had to be on the outside. The outside looks like this. His own restaurant called Kitchen Savages along the streets where he grew up and still lives. One of the name Kitchen Savages. One of the young people that I was helping said, you should name it Savage Kitchen because they think we're savages and they want to throw us away. But oh, wow. <laughs> they identify as savages. <laughs> it's a nice restaurant so far, though. It's, it looks very good. He got swindled by the youth. That's terrible. <laughs> well, he's in kill him. With savages, and they want to throw who's they? What do you mean, they the guy who you did the glider that you just put a gun to his head at the other restaurant? Mm -hmm. That guy, man, what the fuck are they talking about? No, the other One guys the on the street helping think you're savages. One of the young people that I was helping said, You should name it Savage Kitchen because they think we're savages and they want to throw us away, but we can redirect that savage energy into the kitchen. Can I get you guys started with anything? Gaston cooked up the idea for this restaurant at the height of the pandemic. After seeing a dramatic increase in deadly crime, the urgent need for health care, and people struggling financially in Ward 8. That's why most of the 23 people he hired are his neighbors. They're returning citizens, they're high school dropouts, they're single Returning citizens means that you're coming home from jail. Mm -hmm. Are his neighbors? How much you want to bet he has a shooting there? They're high school dropouts. 
They're single dads. They're single moms. They're also talented. Bernard Collins is head chef. He was laid off during the pandemic. At the time, you know, my wife was pregnant, so I was kind of getting doubtful at first, you know, going through the motions, you know, as any man would, you know, getting scared, like, what am I going to do? Kind of went into panic mode. I uh, did DoorDash, you know, trying to just make ends meet. Elizabeth Scruggs worked at a grocery store and was also out of work. At the interview was over, I was walking down the street and I started crying. I was like, God, you are right. I know the failure of this is not an option because failing means the people that I hired, I don't want to cry. Failure means the people that I hire won't have an opportunity to feed their families. They won't have an opportunity to make sure that they don't go back to jail or they pay their rent. And so this is much more than just putting food down on the table. This is about saving lives. The main ingredient being used in this restaurant's recipe is simply care. Gaston says he's being guided by his mother's love. Ooh, oh, wow. You want me to cry some more? Whose picture greets everyone at the front door. She's my motivation for living. I think anyone who lost a parent, there are days where you don't want to get up. But I don't have an option not to get up. When she was sick, dying in the hospital of COVID, she still motivated me to get up and work. She said, baby, you got to do this. Go and get your ramekins. This being getting his community back to the table, using his experience in city government and good food to solve their problems. The solution is just simple, right? I mean, we can't fight each other. We have to love our way out of this situation. Now, by the way, this isn't Gaston's first restaurant. He opened up a Kitchen Savages in Southwest DC back in 2021, where he's also using that kitchen to teach teens about the culinary industry. I so love how he says we have to love our mm -hmm. way out of this, yeah. that we, we have to pour <laughs> ourselves into this. I think it's amazing. I think we have our next field trip <laughs> yeah. location. Yeah, I mean, listen, I will check it out. I go to the one in Southwest. I ain't going to that one. <laughs> hey, hey uh, even though that's not, you know, even though what he's doing is not the solution, you know, I really, you know, salute that brother, man, for what he's doing, man. And he's been through a lot, dash. apparently. I'm going to either uh -huh. go to it or door dash from it next to when I go back to D.C., man. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right, little spot, man. And dude seems, I, I don't know him, but, like, I, I've, you know, I'm, I'm in the area a lot. Like, he just, he be there, and he just he just got good vibes, good energy. No, he, he a good guy. He just, I mean, all that woke shit, that just, that's baseline shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's just standard yeah. operating procedure for something, man. Right. <laughs> Especially anybody else? Mm -hmm. 